It's clear that for a number of reasons that as a club we haven't performed in recent seasons at a level that meets either our expectations or our supporters' expectations. The board has a duty to act in the best interests of its members and supporters and to be bold in making strategic decisions. As a result, the Fremantle Football Club board has decided that the club requires a new coach and a new CEO for the season 2020 and beyond. Euroz is a proudly Western Australian firm focused on building long-term wealth for local businesses and families. Euroz aims to provide clients with leading wealth creation solutions that encompasses proactive investment advice, financial planning and portfolio administration. Euroz Securities Executive Director and passionate Frio fan Lucas Robinson will help you kick more investment goals than you can poke a stick at and is the man you must speak to ASAP. So if you feel like your investments require restump, rewire, replumb, Give Lucas a call on 08 94881424 or email on lrobinson at euros.com, that's E-U-R-O-Z.com, for a free financial health check. Because you should always let the cobblers do the cobbling. And as a cobbler, Lucas makes a damn fine investment advisor. Hello and welcome to episode 26 of the Purple Rain, a emergency podcast. Emergency! Brought to you by Euros and Just Make It Work. Jeez, Oz. Uh, well, yesterday, what, at uh, 6, 7 o'clock we finished the pod. Yep. Everything was done. Everything's up and about. Yep. Pod goes up. Yep. Uh, this morning at 9 o'clock I receive a, uh, a message from one of my friends who uh, happens to be in the industry. Um, I confirm it with another one of the people that we know that's in the industry, mate. And before you know it, I'm, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's nine twenty, and uh, we've gone from a little bit of joy, well, not necessarily joy, but kind of relief that maybe Rossich was leaving. Who you know, I, I saw her as someone who you know seemed to take a little bit too much control in his role as CEO. To Ross is gone as well, and they're both gone. And even Ross said it himself during his press yeah, conference. That was he goes, you know, he was <laughs> off site talking to um, Harley Bunnell and having a chat with him. And um, they said, oh, you know, come in. And Rossich wasn't involved in the conversation. He's like, oh, Rossich is probably getting oh, the boy. sack. And then he was like, oh, God, maybe me as well. So, look, um, a very, very interesting, uh, literally, what's it been? About six hours? Yeah, six hours. Um, since. All the news came out. Um, Dale Orcott faced the media. Uh, Rossich faced the media. Ross faced the media, mate. Um, your initial thoughts, mate, because we, we talked about this yeah. um, just before, and you're talking yeah. about the Mark Harvey stuff. And yeah. When Mark Harvey was sacked, and you remember that day. So. Yeah, so I, I can remember distinctly where I was um, when I heard it, and I'm almost as numb. It's Probably that's the right word for it, because there's no... You know, especially for me, it didn't make much sense at this point of the season. Like, I thought it would have come earlier. But now that it has happened, I'm just getting my head around it. And I think the way, and who knows how you orchestrate these things, but I think the way the club has attempted to handle it is quite classy. Both uh, the coach and the CEO have had their opportunities to speak. I loved, I, I didn't see all of Ross's... Point. I happened to be walking in after the uh, the period had finished when I was teaching and my phone exploded and I don't normally check my phone throughout the day and it just happened to be in front of me and it was just going ding, 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 ding. And then I thought, hang on, what's going on? Then I had students knocking on the door going, hey, do you know anything? All of a sudden I'm like, what's going on? So then I quickly tuned in, listened to the um, to what I could of the Ross oppressor during, um, during my break and Ross handled himself in a classy manner. Oh, mate, I mean, yeah, I, I tweeted it on our Purple Rain, at Purple Rain 95, and I was like, every time I'm out on Ross, and I was like, 
you know, I, I'm still in shock, and I, like my older brother sent me a text, like, what are we, like, what's your thoughts? Everyone around work obviously knows that I'm a massive Dockers fan, and yeah. we've got the Dockers pod, so yeah. it's like, what what's going on? Um, what are your thoughts? Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you angry? What? Uh, and I've got no real opinion at the moment. I like, and I even put it on the the Facebook as well. I put it as a weird decision, but the weird decision for me comes in the timing. Yeah, that's where the I weirdness agree. comes in. Yeah. I mean, like, why now? Why not next week? You know, like, what's going on? Like, mate, I dead set. No, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen this weekend now, but I thought we were in line for a 10-goal flogging against Port. I thought the players are just done. They're ready to wrap up the season. We've got a number of guys that are potentially leaving at the end of the season. We've got guys who are injured. We've got a young team. And I, I just thought that Port were just going to, you know, at at. And, like, we don't play well at Footy Park and we've been flogged by Port by 10 goals in the last couple of matches. So, you know, at, at Footy Park. Yeah, it was not Footy Park, green, Adelaide right? Oval. Um, you know, and it's it, it was looking like it. And, look, I, I think it's still maybe the case. I'm not sure. I don't know. Like, I, I mean, we'll talk about David Hale later, but I, I don't know where that decision comes from as well. Mate, um, just before we move more into Ross, just on Rossich, mate, um, obviously, you know, oversaw the new facility, the new stadium. Headhunted Ross as yep. well. So they they were linked. Um, you know, but I think, we, we, you know, the membership and the money starting to roll in, but it was starting to dip off. I think they were internally linked. Um, Alcott said that, oh, Rossich actually said that there was a disagreement on the board level. That was the case. We know that um, Peter Bell tried to get in Banook. What do you, how do you say his last name? Kuriduwaku. Yeah, um, that guy from Adelaide, and it was stopped at board level, believed uh, by Rossich. I think that was reported. So look, I mean, uh, and he uh, Peter Bell is trying to improve and enhance what's going on. Yeah, um, I think we've got worries with our list management. Yeah, I think we've got worries with our high performance. I think we've got worries with our strength and conditioning. And I think now is the time not just to get rid of one person, but I think there needs to be a big broom. And I think, you know, there should be some people actually worried, even even the podcasters. Um, oh, man, we're in big trouble. Mate. This could be the last... Thursday well, could we, be the last yeah, part. Well, purple patch, oh, we'll mate. keep going. Yeah, we're still going on the rain. Yeah, yeah. Rain for life. Yeah. Mate, so look, um, I think in the end, Rossich backed Ross and the board... Uh, and Dale Orcott put it in a in a very valid way. He's a supporter first, and you know, to be honest, we've been putting up some pretty insipid performances mm. with skill level, and you don't see that improvement. And or- Orcott said it in the right way. He said, "Look, we're not going to renew Ross's contract, so what's the point? You know, what's the point? What's the point of keeping him for another year? You know, yep. like, and that's where I'm kind of like, Treading I can water, see I that logic, and you know, you can see that where where was the pi- play development coming from? We talked about Brasher and Chera. Have they got that much better? You know, we'd seen Blakely playing on the half-back line rather than in the guts. You know, we're looking at um, guys in our forward line that just seem to have stagnated. Um, Team selections that are questionable. You know, like skill execution and errors and decision-making that's questionable. And, you know, look, we can't... Ross isn't out there kicking the ball and probably isn't making those decisions. But you just wonder, mate. And, you know, it's really... Like I said on the rain on... um, Yesterday it was. Mate, we lost to Gold Coast. We lost to Melbourne. We lost to a 21-man Carlton without Kerno or Cripps. We lost to a 21-man St. Kilda. And we lost to a 21-man Essendon. I mean, those games, two of those at home, you know, and just, uh, uh, like, they're, they're the games that cost him his... Because we've ended up, this year we are uh, 9 and 12. We win yeah. three of those... We win three of those, to, uh, of those five, mate, all of a sudden. You know, it's, it's turned Does around. Does this happen? Does yeah, this happen uh, if we make finals? I, I don't. I don't think it does, man. And Orcott said, "Oh, you know, it's not down to match." But I, I think it really was. Yeah. I think they thought they had a team to make finals. And yeah. look, you can look at the injuries, and I, I, I honestly, I, I do feel frustrated. So, if the injuries are a problem, then why are we reviewing into that? What are we doing with that? Because we've had a mix, mystic diagnosis of Lob. We've had a missed diagnosis of Hogan. Um, Cox has got re-injured. You know, and he's out for longer than expected. Tabernard's had a foot injury, um, which you know it looked like it it could have been maybe avoided a little bit by the the surface and you know how much he's training and things like that. I mean, uh, they showed us this state of the art thing that can d- pick the gate and pick up stuff, but I mean, where's that and how's that not work when we've got like three guys with foot rot essentially? Yeah, you know, we got Lob had a busted foot, then he's come back with a busted shoulder and he played and his shoulder was cooked. You know, like, 
where's where's the thought process behind that as well? Mm. So that's got to be taken into account because the best 22 that we've got, and Ross kept talking about six of the best 18, but the best 22 guys we've got, if we put them out there on the park and the best 18, I think, our best 18, it matches it with anyone. Yep. And I think that's the thing. And, you know, uh, we've really got to have an overview of everything about Oz. Yeah, and I think the interesting thing that we may have discussed before is the idea that luck plays a massive role in not only whether you win a premiership, but also your tenure as a coach as well. Yeah. And if you look at if you look at the teams that we've had, Ross has been able to get the most out of the teams that we've had, you know, barring injury. And and I think unfortunately this year with the injuries that we had and you couldn't get another coach to come in and, and do the job that he was able to do yeah. and keep us in those games. But as Alcock said before, it's really important that, you know, we see the club moving forward. Um, and we've touched on skills before. We've touched on injuries. And, and there's just, there's a myriad of reasons, um, which you can't blame all on one person. But yeah. it's just the climate, unfortunately, that surrounds the current situation, the current, or what was the current group in charge. And I think the club has made moves. And I think it's caused a lot of shock. The players weren't yeah. clearly consulted. I don't think the employees knew what was going on yeah, either, Yeah, so like our, our, my contact with uh, players and media personnel, obviously, and with people and staff and things like that, it was it completely came out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, like we've we've got our contacts in, in the AFL industry now, mate. So it's kind of like, what what do you do? You know, like, yeah. you know, they, they, they've all been shocked by it. Mm. And it, it is, mate, it, it, it came as a shock to me. Like, do you expect on a Tuesday morning that Ross no, Lyons getting I, sacked? I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea that. I mean, it's such a weird time. I, I mm. still say that. I know on on one of the questions I was flicking through that just as I was walking out the office, and someone said, "What do you mean weird?" But weird is in the timing. Yeah, the timing, bro. Yeah, like weird time. Weird timing. But how I see that, and we'll, we'll probably. I'm not sure if we're going to segue into this, um, and whether or not you want to talk more about Ross's achievements or whatever. But we we've got trade period coming up. We've got two players that are rumoured to have been moving on, and who knows if they do or they don't. Mm. But you know, the, my understanding is, you know, those two players that on the wings. Yep. One goes to St Kilda, one goes to Melbourne. Um, do we get picks for those inside picks? Do we then use those picks? You know, we've got a massive draft coming up for us. We've got an opportunity to to reshape club. We've got an opportunity to perhaps bring someone in. Um, we're well and truly in the hunt for Tim Kelly. So I can see some logic in what they're trying to do. It's going to be very interesting to see how that impacts on the soft cap. Yeah. Clearly, we're going to be over the soft cap. Um, how far over, we don't know. We, we we won't find that out. But, you know, is it over a dollar that we've got to pay in tax over the time? Who knows? Yeah. Because it escalates for, you know, at every point. And then the next person that we've got to get in, we have to remember that the next person that we're going to have to get in will have to be on a significantly reduced salary. Mm. Can probably compare to industry sal um, standard. One would yeah. imagine in the interim. Yeah. Now, that's the other thing I was going to say. Do we just take the interim for a year or do we actually look to appoint a coach now and you know front back load it however we, we want to shape it? It'll be very interesting to see how... Yeah, look, I, I think Oz, if if we have a look at it, and we'll, I mean, we can jump ahead to this for the next coach. Look, I've got it as two categories. You can either do new coaches, new guys, and this includes Sumich, who who's yet to yet to be a head coach, or old people that have been tried and maybe try them again. So, look, in terms of the new coaches, and just to let you know before we get into this, the odds put out by Sportsbet were uh, J Lo's a dollar seventy, Brad Scott's three dollars, Hale's five dollars, which I mean you might as well put your money in a in a incinerator. Um, Voss is five fifty, and Pryor's eight dollars. I don't see Pryor or Hale even having a sniff, and if they do. I think that, that you know, like, uh, I don't want to be rude, but they're they they were there, they've been there, mate. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, sorry, just knocked over a bottle. That's all right, mate. Um, you know, so look, I think it goes the new coaches of J Lo, Sumich, Sam Mitchell, uh, Jamie Graham, uh, Coxie Glassy, and Scotty Burns. I think are all uh, guys that potentially could come in. I don't know if any of uh, like, especially those last couple would be head coaches. Maybe Scotty Byrne. Um, I know, I know that there's uh, big raps on him. Yeah. Um, guys that have been tried before, Woosher, yeah, 
Brad Scott, Ratton, Voss, and Lepich. Um, look, so I'm, I've I've heard uh, that the talk from Over East more or less is either Sue Mitch or Wusha. Mm. The the talk of J Lo coming up is possible. Yeah, but whether or not we can somehow structure a a deal there, a contract there. Who knows? That's not. I don't know, mate. I'm not into the contract game, so who knows? Yeah. But I'd like to see, you know, now that we're going down this direction, mate. I'd I'd really like to see some Fremantle roots. You know, let let's really, and and that's not. Does that necessarily mean the head coach? You know, I'd love to see J Lo as a head coach. Yeah. But I'd like to see more Fremantle roots down there. You know what I mean? Like get back to what we are about. Um. And that could be with the assistance as well. Yeah, but I mean, I, I feel like our our actual culture now is based around Ross Lyon and blue collar and hardworking players and effort and things like that. So, I mean, what 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 is the Fremantle what is the Fremantle way? You know what I mean? If you want to say it like that, I think it it's dictated by your leaders, who are your CEO and your head coach. And I think now whoever comes in has got to stamp their authority in their culture. And whether that is Sumich or, or J-Lo or if it's a Sam Mitchell that comes back across, I doubt he will. I think he's got a young family yeah. and things like that. But for me, mate, it's clearly the chip on the shoulder. Mm. And that's when we played our best football under Ross is when 2012, 2013, when yeah. we were really trying to prove ourselves. We were the, the younger brother, you know, the, the poorer cousin, however you want to say it. And we just played with that ferocious appetite for success. And then... You know, we, we garnered success, we, we worked through it, and, and then, you know, we had that, unfortunately, that big drop-off. But got to get back to that chip on the shoulder, mate. I mean, we're, we still haven't won a premiership. Yeah. So you should be playing with that hunger, yeah. that chip on the shoulder. And I think that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, that's what we need to get back to. So, I don't know, for me, who knows where we go, but I, I, I would like to see some Fremantle people back at the club in some capacity. Um j Lo's one for me. Yeah. Whether he's an assist, senior assistant or whether he's the coach, I would love to see him at the club. I think he'd be really great. I, I mean, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Who are the the type of guys? Well, can I just ask you this question? Mm-hmm. Would you prefer to have, given where we are and what was said, would you prefer to have a proven coach or a recycled coach is probably the best way to put that. Yeah, I, or would I, you go? I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? Because if you look and the the stuff I've always read on coaching and things like that, and probably the the best stuff I've read is is actually Mike Lombardi's stuff on culture, and you actually can be better off getting a person who has failed and has learnt from their failure. So someone like a Lepich or a Voss, I don't necessarily like Ratten that much. I don't think he's that good a coach personally. Um, Brad Scott, I'm not sure. I mean, we scored 147 points versus him, mate, so I, I wouldn't touch him. But, you know, someone like a Lepich, to me, actually stands out a bit. You know, a guy who went back to Richmond, you know, that back line is unbelievable. Yep. And, you know, that's that, I, I think the back line is a cornerstone to a bit of, it, um, you know, the Dockers and defense first and things like that and blue collar. And, you know, Lepich might be someone that is a good pickup. Now, the problem is as well with our soft cap, with, with Ross taking up a million bucks, we don't have room for assistance either. That this is the other problem that we've got to deal with. And like next year may be a completely wasted year. And and like we were talking before, I was like, how many years can we waste of Sonny Walters in his prime, Nat, Nat Fife, Fife in his prime, Hogan's going to be back and hopefully up and running. You know, Hamling and Alex Pierce, they're all starting to move into their prime. You know, if Bradley Hill stays, him in his prime. You know, we've got this core group of guys and the development of underneath and Mate, I don't know. I, I don't know if we have a good old-fashioned review like they do every year, you know, but have a good review and look at our list and go, hang on, what's going on here? Well, like, I, I, maybe I think we need to go back to the well with our draft picks as well. Yeah, yep. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, look, I, I still hold out hope that even though the talk is that those guys are leaving, I, I mean, yeah, Brad Brad Hill's in his best form. Yeah. Like he's, be- he's, he's playing better for me than, in my mind, sorry, than when he won the best and fairest. Yeah. He, he might win the best and fairest this year. Yeah. You know, like it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. So, I mean, look, scenarios, and we'll talk about this during the offseason a bit more, but, I mean, if we get pick three or whatever St. Kilda out, pick four, I mean, if St. Kilda beats Sydney, 
we, we will go below St Kilda on the ladder and we lose to Port Adelaide. I mean, we're going to drop down to 14th. Yep. Mate, and it's just, in the end, I think this is the, the, and just on that, the critical factor. Is that- yeah, and, and the critical factor also is that we need to be ruthless. Yeah. Two years left on a contract. It better be pretty damn good for oh, yeah. our best and fairest. Well, pick, it's more pick four. Th- pick four and. Pick four and a player. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's not... Uh, and then, like, I mean, then we can think about maybe we trade pick four for Geelong's pick, which will probably be pick 16. So you move down, you swap picks. Tim Kelly, you know, will that work? I don't know if that that accepts something like that. You know, who knows what, what Geelong will accept for Tim Kelly. You know, because they, they can play hardball. But the other thing is as well, Tim Kelly's out of contract, so he can just say, mate, I'm walking at the end of the year. Yeah. Like he got, that he actually holds a few cards. It's a bit different Whereas for them. with Brad Hill, we've got all the cards. Um, Ed Langdon, another guy thinking about leaving, you know, for Melbourne. We're not going to get the, f- the Melbourne's first pick. Will we get the second pick? Which actually Mike probably Hull. been the... Why not? Well, their, second, ball, mate. Mate, their second pick might be it, yeah, is pick 20. Yeah. You know, pick 20 is a pretty good pick yeah. for Ed Langdon. Mate, and all of a sudden, that's around the range of the guys who have been in this West Australian side. So, look, if we can get a few of these young West Aussies and really regenerate. But, I mean, the thing is as well, what mode are we in? Where are we? We're not Arthur or Martha. Are we mm. real building? And that this is one of the problems with Ross is that we never fully invested, invested yeah. in a rebuild. And, you know, it wasn't yeah. until too late, mate. And if you look at how we went under Ross, okay, so... 2012, we go 14 and 8 and finish 7th. 2013, we go 16, uh, 1 and 5 and finish 3rd. Uh, 2014, we finish 4th and 16 and 6. 2015, we finish 1st, 17 and 5. Uh, 2016, 4, t- uh, 4 and 18, 16th, obviously. Uh, then we go 8 and 14 and 8 and 14, two years in a row and finish 14th. And this year, we went 9 and 12 and we got one game to go. You know, look... And and the thing is, mate, that we we've got to really look back on. And I might try and if I can find the article again because it's one of the greatest Harry Hindside articles of all time. But in two thousand and sixteen, at the start of the year, they thought that they could replace Luke McFarlane with a team defence based around Zach Dawson, and all the major assistants left, and we replaced him with I, I don't know who knows what who replaced him with and the game style changed. We wanted to play more attacking yeah. through the center, you know, skill based game style, and it just completely backfired. All those things backfired, and you know as well. The last thing that obviously happened was Matthew Pavlich was just at, at the end of his at the end of his uh, career, and you know, mate, I think it's something that we do need to consider. With with Ross Lyon, and I, I really think he, he has been one of the better coaches of the last 10 years. On the flip side as well, mate, or 15 years, sorry, under St. Kilda as well. But on the flip side, mate, he's had two of the best five centre-half so forwards in the last 25 yeah. years with yeah. Revolt and Pavlich. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like, you've got to think about that cattle that he's had, you know. But look, footy is very, very short-sighted. We forget the great wins this year against GWS, against Collingwood, Geelong. and against Geelong. They're three great wins. You know, we've had three great wins there. I, I guess the problem is, is that we continuously lose against Eagles, and we watch the Eagles, and we see their skills, and we see how it's all skill based, and they kill us. You know, we see how you know Richmond have gone from zero to hero now. Collingwood bounced back pretty well. Um, you know, teams like. Western Bulldogs have won a flag, you know, so that's another team that's won a flag before us in the last, since we joined the comp. You know, we see uh, teams like um, St. Kilda, Carlton, Regenerate and North Melbourne under a new coach. So it does it get a bit stale. Is it stale under Ross? Is that the problem? Is that what was happening? And, you know, it, it's weird. But I, I often, I mean, I, I, like I said on the weekend, oh, yesterday, mate, I keep thinking it was the weekend. Like I said yesterday, we're playing a team, and this is where I feel for us. We're playing a team with six blokes who are not AFL standards. You know, a quarter of the team just about aren't up to AFL standards. And what do you do there, mate? How can you help help a guy when that's the case? Hmm. When you've got six blokes that are below AFL standards. You know, how are you supposed to win games? You know, when you think about it like that. But, you know, on the flip side, it's been four years, and it's that lack of investment and complete clean out. And... Maybe part of that problem was moving to Optus, but I think realistically, it needed to come in. In and the I th- I think the the biggest 
the biggest glaring error. And I think it was either 2017 or 2018, mate. First round. Oh, it was yeah. last year. First round. And we're playing Michael Johnson, who was over it. We're playing two more years, old Piercy. We're playing Zach Dawson. You know, like we're playing these old guys. We had an aging list and we continued to play these old guys. We didn't move on from them quick enough. Yeah. We didn't pull the trigger on them quick enough. And, you know, that although they are champions and things like that, it's like, you know, when you when the you know, when you see the the end, you've got to go hard and fast, you know? And it's it's gotta be ruthless. Football is a ruthless industry and it's gotta be ruthless, mate. Mm. You know? Anyway, else, mate. Just before we go, dream scenario of who coaches and who do you think coaches? Uh, I honestly don't know who coaches, so I'll start with that. Yeah. Um. Yeah i I would like to see Longmuir coach, mm. but. More important, I think this is more important than that. Is I, I want a good crop of assistant coaches. Yeah, because a, a coach is only as strong as his assistants. And I, I really think as well as I, I, I would love to see this scenario. I think I'd love to see Justin Longmuir come back as the head coach. I'd love to see, even though these guys aren't Dockers guys. Yep. I think Coxie and Glass, if we can get them back. Oh boy. From the Eastern States and with those two have a senior assistant, a guy who's maybe coached at the higher level. So a Voss or a Lepich or even, you know, Sumich to come in there as another senior assistant to come back to the club as a senior assistant. I don't know if he would, but even if it's Sumich with Longmuir, Cox, Glass, you know, that, that, that crop of guys at the club, you know, and you have, Glassy is your backline coach. J Lo's your forwards coach. Yeah. Cox is your midfields coach. And you know, you work from there, mate. And I, I just think that's that's a way forward. And you know, the guys who have been work because it, you've got to have a, a perspective. Scotty Burns of, is key there, I think, mate. Scotty Burns as well would be a good idea. Get yeah. him back to WA, you know. Just and like Justin Longmuir, I think, works with no, where's Burns at now? I think he's at is he at Collingwood? Collingwood, I thought. Maybe. Maybe somewhere else. Anyway, but look, I, I think we've we've really got to go out a different way. And the thing is as well, Oz, which is probably the, the most glaring thing, is if we can improve our skills 10%, 10%, that's all we need. Now, that might seem like a pretty big bump up, but if we can improve them 10%, we're a top four side. If we can improve them 5%, we're a top eight side. If we can improve our injury status with guys, we get better. We get better. And that's the problem is that we haven't had the players out on the park and... Again, that's where I feel for Ross, mate. You, you're only as good as your cattle. You you honestly are. And, you know, if you're going through guys that played on the weekend, and you guys can do this at home, look at the 22 that played on the weekend and put a grade next to each of them, you know, and just think, how, because we are a very top-heavy list. We've got a lot of good players, and then it drops off pretty rapidly, you know. But look, hopefully on the weekend we see David Hale coach. For me, is just a mind boggler. Like you're looking at me, opening your eyes. But mate, it is. It's weird. I mean, uh, like how the senior assistant doesn't coach, or I don't know. Michael Pry must have wanted is it. He, or... Is he the senior? No, he's not the no, senior. No, Michael assistant. Pry's senior assistant. Mm. But he's not coaching. No, Hale's going to coach the forward line coach. Yeah, when we can't kick a score to save our life. Anyway, mate. On that note, I think that's enough for today. Thanks, guys, for listening to the Emergency Pod. Um, I know there was plenty of calls for it. It's been a real busy day for us. We'll um, be back on Thursday for the Purple Patch on the other feed. Remember, we're at Purple Rain 95 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And, guys, um, I've put up a Facebook post in terms of Ross going. Comment below on what you think. Let's generate some discussion. Massive. I might even um, We might even put up a little post on who you think should coach next. Give us your uh, ideal thoughts. Big day and in reason the reason why. Big day in the um, the life of the football club, mate. Yeah. And um, let's hope moving forward, maintain positive vibes. Get back up to that top four position, baby.